think a, 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 an example. I'm going to use a, a custom manufacturing example. You might think of a custom manufacturer uh, like building uh, automotive custom parts or maybe uh, someone like Dell Computer. The concept of the scorecard and how we get a picture of the strategy is this. When we wrote our first book, we uh, summarized that they're really uh, looking at the financial view of the organization is necessary but not sufficient. We also needed to take a look at our customers and what they need. We needed to take a look at our internal processes and how well they're performing. And finally, we're working with Peter Senge at MIT, uh, and he just written a book called The Fifth Discipline, which talks about organizational learning and organizational growth. And so the fourth perspective, we called it uh, uh, learning and growth. In truth, we really meant organizational learning and organizational growth. In many cases, we take a look at homegrown balance scorecards, and the organizations mistakenly call that perspective people. It's more than people. It's the competencies, it's the culture, but it's also the enabling structures you need, the strategic assets to be successful. Now, these are the common four perspectives of the scorecard. And in fact, you can use any perspectives you want. Uh, many of our clients might use uh, Six Sigma or the Baldrige Pillars and so forth. The net is we need to look at more than just the financial measures. We also need to look at leading and lagging measures. And we also have to look at tangible and, and intangible assets. But the concept inside the scorecard, though, which is interesting, what we call a strategy map, begins to describes something else that we saw in organizations, and that is there's a relationship between the, these four perspectives. In the first book, as I said, we drew it like this, and we described them as sort of four points of a compass. But we began to see that there's a relationship between them. In the private sector, your overall objective is to achieve financial success. To do that, you better uh, understand your customers' needs and meet those needs. In order to under meet those needs, you better have the right internal processes which support making your customers happy so you can charge them money. So how do you uh, build and maintain those right processes? Well, we need the right enablers. We need the right competencies, culture, and enabling structures. So there's a cause and effect relationship between these four perspectives. A simple example is Starbucks. In order for you to spend two bucks for a cup of coffee at Starbucks, they have to meet your needs as a customer. Now, your needs as a customer might be a great tasting cup of coffee, but it might also be what they call the third place. It's not home, it's not the office, but if I want to get away from the chaos at home and listen to some calm music and a sofa and have a nice cup of coffee, I can go to Starbucks. Or if I want to avoid the chaos at the office but get some work done, I can go to Starbucks and sit at a desk, have Wi-Fi and get some work done. Uh, maybe you also like the ambiance there, or maybe uh, you want to buy your own coffee to take home. So there's a whole bunch of things in the customer value equation that if Starbucks can get it right, you'll spend $2 for a cup of coffee. Well, now I understand what the customer value equation is I'm trying to satisfy. I can begin to reverse engineer what are the internal processes I need to make my customers happy so I can charge them 2 bucks for a cup of coffee. Once I understand what those internal processes are, I can once again reverse engineer what are the competencies, culture, and enabling structures I need to build and maintain those processes to make the customers happy to achieve financial success. So we should be able to take any strategy and draw it as a cause and effect diagram across these quadrants. Now, I opened up by saying 80% of strategies fail. So I'm not suggesting you need to come up with a new strategy. Just take the one you have right now because the corollary to our research is that there's an 80% chance you're not certain whether your current strategy is right or not. So take the current one, monitor and measure for six months, and then have a strategic conversation. Now, let's go back to our case study. Uh, overall, uh, for this organization, we want, might want an objective, something like, you know, focus on profitability. To do that, there's sort of two things this organization needs to do. One is accelerate cash cycles. Um, and secondly, get exactly the right product at the right place at the right time, you know, speed, value, that kind of thing. And if we can get the right product fast and create value, it's going to help us focus on profitability. But what it's also going to do is it's also going to help us accelerate cash flows. So how are we going to get the, uh, the right product fast? Well, there's a couple of things we need to do. One is uh, we need to have personalized service. If we're going to get into the custom manufacturing business, we better have very personalized service so that we can tailor our, our customer expectations and capabilities. 
We also need to make sure that we have the capability, the internal capability, of mass customization. So if someone wants a specific component on their car, we have the capability of adding that in without slowing down the production line. Or with Dell, I should be able to change the screen type or the keyboard type or the CPU capability. And if I can do the mass customization correctly, that's also going to help me accelerate the cash cycles. So how does this work? Well, to do all of this, we probably need to internally have a great market understanding. And if we understand the market, that will both enable us to do the right capabilities in mass customization and enable the right personalized service. And underpinning this is a strategic objective like, you know, uh, process innovation, for example, which kind of supports everything that happens above. So this is an example of a strategy map. How can we describe in a simple term what our overall strategy is in the organization? And this becomes an important communication tool because in many cases, individuals can't even tell us what their strategy is because it's too complicated because it's in a, in a bunch of narrative forms through letters from the CEO, PowerPoint presentations, and so on. We need to make it more executable. Now, the next step best practices tell us is the leadership team has to prioritize these objectives. See, the problem is everyone in the organization is going to look at this and interpret it differently based on their own feelings about what the value proposition is, what part of the organization they work in, where they last had, last had a significant customer issue, and so forth. But we need to get one overall aligned view of priorities. So the leadership team should be able to effectively take 100% and allocate it across these objectives to tell us what the focus is. Again, a simple example. If I think of my children, yeah, they've got three core objectives, I'll suggest. Uh, they should have fun, they should participate in sports and be healthy, and they should uh, get an education. Now, if I asked my children to weight those objectives, they'd probably give it, you know, 50% have fun, 50% participate in sports, and the rest for education. Now, as a parent, as their strategic manager, I happen to know the weighting is different. And I know that because their mother told us so. <laughs> she said, it's an 80% focus on education. Well, for children, we're doing this because we want them to lead great lives. And it's a fairly safe bet if they have a good education that will lead them towards a, a great life. And that 80% doesn't mean 80% of their time or 80% of their money spent on it, but 80% of their focus. If they're getting straight A's, I can throttle back on that 80% and focus more on sports or, or social life. But if I'm not achieving those grades, I need to make sure I have that focus and uh, get the performance as required. Now, we can go into more detail later, but the concept is the leadership team needs to be able to sit down and weight these objectives. So in this example, I've suggested there's a high focus in this year around mass customization leading to having the right products. 50% of the strategy lies in these two objectives. Now, maybe last year we had higher focus on process innovation and market understanding, and having gained those things, we can now move the weighting up. And in theory, once we get this mass customization nailed, the weighting will move even further up and so forth. So the weighting varies over time, no different than in your life. It's no longer an 80% focus on weighting, on, on education rather. There's still some, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to this webinar, but it's throttled down from 80% to, to something more reasonable. Now, we have a complete strategy map. This really allows us to communicate strategy to the organization, and more importantly, communicate changes in strategy. Many of our insurance and financial institutions have reweighted their strategy maps three or four times over the last year because of the changes in their marketplaces and the overall um, economics, exchange rates, and so forth. So this allows us to begin building a degree of agility in the organization, adjusting the strategy not once a year, but on a continuous process as the environment requires. Now, from the strategy map, we should be able to do the next step of finding performance indicators which exist in the current organization. So in this example, we've picked a bunch of indicators which allow us to quickly determine how the organization is performing. Now, it's possible that we won't even share with many people what we're specifically measuring. Again, think of the dashboard of your car. That check engine light, who knows what it's reporting? And we don't really care. The process experts have figured it out. All we need to know is that light, check engine, is more important than, say, the windshield wiper fluid light. And when it goes on, our 
behavior is, let's go call up the technician. This should happen in our organizations. We should see a green indicates uh, we're performing well, uh, yellow slightly behind target, uh, but the green little arrow here indicates that at least uh, our performance is trending up over time, and red significantly behind target. So in theory, if we see a red, we should know to pick up the phone and talk to the process expert, the technician, who's going to use business intelligence tools to determine what caused it to turn red and give us that analysis. No different than the garage mechanic does the same. There's another important lesson to be learned here, though. If we look at this, this is now called a scorecard, a bounce scorecard, because it's balancing the near term, the long term, our strategic priorities and so forth. If we're looking at this and we're the leadership team, ask yourself, which objective should we talk about first? The real question is going to come down to, should we be firefighting? Should we take a look at this red objective first or this yellow one? Because red's significantly behind target and red is, or yellow is slightly behind target. Well, I'd hypothesize we need to think carefully about this because the question really is, is a red at 10% more important than a yellow at 30 so by overlaying the strategic priority on the data, we can begin getting an aligned view of how we should interpret that data. Again, that's like checking the engine light when I'm going to work, but not worrying about it when I'm going to the hospital in an emergency. The weighting informs us how to interpret the data. So eventually, we need to make this sort of information available to everyone in the organization. See, strategy is not just the executive committee's job. Strategy is everyone's job. And we need to make not only the strategy, but how we're performing against it available so that moment to moment we can all make an aligned decision about how we should proceed and focus in the organization. Now, I've spent a little bit of time talking about